Hey rinkers, one of the first questions when we talk about building a rink is, how level is your yard? Some customers say it's perfectly flat. Others will say, oh, I think it's about a 1% grade. But what I'm after and what we're really after is how much water is there in your rink? So we know how tall the bores have to be and so that we support it properly. Today, I'm gonna go over two very simple ways to figure this out. Building a rink is a piece of cake. And if you get this, you're full on your way to getting this done. So way number one, which is the more simplistic way, uh, theoretically, is using a line level. I will go over this in a minute, but brief summary is we're going to string around this 20 by 46 standard rink, and then we're going to get every section of the line perfectly level. Now the way that I prefer is using a laser transit. I know that sounds like a complex word, but it's nothing but a, a laser sheet that's going to be perfectly level to the Earth's gravity. It'll be like a sheet of water up in the air. And you're going to use that to determine how much water you have in each corner. Hi guys, now I'm going to go over how to use a string level. Setup is important. I, I want to emphasize that. It's very important that you have reference points and setups. This is stake one. This is a four foot rebar and it's pounded into the ground for one foot. Here is an additional piece of rebar. It's our ground stake. You'll see later on why that's important, but we'll get back to that. So here I have six stakes laid out and I, I labeled them. This stake here is labeled stake number one. I usually choose stake number one as where I can perceive the highest part of the ground is. So as I stated earlier, this is our standard 20 by 46 rink. Several hundreds of you are building this rink this year. So it's a good example. Uh, one thing to notice is that stake one, two, and stake three is in the middle. And, and there's a very important reason why. When you use a string level, the max you want to stretch your string level to still be accurate is 25 feet. So with a 20 by 46, this is a 46 length, we're at 23 feet. So we'll get started and I'll explain what I'm doing as we go along. I'm assuming that this is the highest spot. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna put a little loop here and I'm gonna set that loop at four inches. There's a good reason why it's four inches because if I'm right, we're gonna be looking at water level. I'm giving Matt the line level and I'm gonna get started to stake number two. Place the line level on there. So we always try and put the line level in the middle of the length of string. It's really important that you do that because if the string bows a little bit, at least in the middle it's horizontal. So with the line level at the center of the rope, you consider your first point fixed and the second point is what you adjust. When the bubble is to the left like that, you want to lower your point. Yeah, right there. So you want the string tight and the level uh, after it settles down to be in the middle. And having a taut st string will help with the uh, settling. All right, now we got a nice uh, bubble in the center between the two lines. As it settles down here, you can tell it's right on center. As long as you could do a straight line, you could do the whole ring. This point and point number one are at the same level. Now we're going to point number three. Once again, it's the point ahead of the previous one that gets adjusted. Two is set, three gets adjusted. Matt? You're pretty much right on, so go ahead and loop it. You want a nice taut string. The tauter the string, the more accurate your uh, measurement. And that looks pretty good. Take a look at the pitch from number two. number four. Up to number five. No adjustments, we hit it right on. 
going to number six. Go down maybe like a quarter inch. Okay, that's right now. And we do the last measurement, it'll really be a check because if the last one's level and the first point's the same as the last point, then it, it's redundant, but yet it's a check. A little bit high. No. Lower. Okay, now that's perfect. All right, guys, there, there you have it. This string represents the grade and the water level. So real quick, right here, right here we have four, four and a half inches. And then if we go to the deepest part here, You'll have 17 inches because I have four there that means four inches of water and 17 inches of water you can build a rink one more thing I want to show you that is sometimes forgotten is that you can have um, hills and valleys in the middle of the rink so it's a good practice to run a diagonal since you already know the level you just need to match to the water level I'm going to go here. If there was a bump or a protrusion that would interfere with the water level, you'd see it here. That's it guys, there's your rink, there's your water level. If you have any questions, we can go over this process. I'd be glad to teach you and help you succeed for your backyard rink. So in summary, some key things when measuring grade with a string level. Tall rebar spikes with grooves. The grooves are nice because it holds your string in place. And then tall so that you could bury them deep in the ground enough. Um, document your, your spike positions, place your string level straight in the middle of each string stretch, make sure your string is taut, and when you're all done, make sure there's no bumps and humps by checking the diagonals.